So far, we have been working with local installation of MongoDB server. But now, let's go ahead and create a remote database hosted on MongoDB Atlas. So in this course, we are not going to use a local database. Instead, we are going to use a remote database hosted on a service called Atlas, provided by the same company that develops MongoDB. And to do that, let's again go to MongoDB website. And there, let's go to products and then let's select Atlas. Atlas is basically a so-called database as a service provider, which takes all the pains of managing and scaling database away from us. So that's already a huge advantage for us, but it is also extremely useful to always have our data in the cloud because in that way we can develop our application from everywhere. And even more importantly, we don't have to export data from our local database and then upload it to the hosted database once we are ready to deploy our application. Okay, so that's why I wanted to use a hosted database right from the beginning to avoid any such tasks like uploading data from local database to hosted database or anything like that. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and let's create a free account with Atlas. And to do that, if you scroll down, here you can see a try free button. Click on that button. And here you need to sign up. So for the sign up, you need to provide these details. Just go ahead and enter this form. Select this checkbox and click on the create your Atlas account button. Here, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to enter my details and I will click on this create your Atlas account button. After you have entered the details in the form and clicked on the create account button, you will be redirected to this page. And in this page, we can see this message that the mail address which you have used to create the account, there you might have received a verification link. So you need to click on that link in order to proceed further. So open your mail and click on the verification link. Once you have verified the link, you can see this page. On this page, click on this continue button. And now we are going to create a new project here in Atlas. So before we create a new project, we need to answer some questions. So the first question is, what is your goal today? So here we are basically going to use Atlas for learning MongoDB. Then what type of application are you building? From here, you can select any option. But here I'm going to select this option. I'm just exploring. Then here it is asking, what is your preferred language? So basically here we need to provide the programming language which we are going to use. In our case, we are going to use JavaScript. Let's go ahead and let's click on this finish button. And now let's go ahead and let's set up our database. So here we want to use the free service. And for the free service, here you can see this option M0, which is free. You can select that. And let's keep these default settings here. And here we need to provide a cluster name. A cluster is basically an instance of our database. Okay, so I'm going to keep the cluster name as cluster zero and I'm going to click on this create button. And this is going to create a new project for us. Now here it is asking to create a new user for the cluster. So here we need to provide a username and password for that user. For the username, I'm simply going to use admin and I will keep this auto generated password here. So whenever we want to connect to our database, which is hosted on this Atlas server, whether we want to connect from MongoDB shell or Compass or from our Node.js application, there we need to use this username and password in order to connect to this database. So what I'm going to do is here I have our Node.js project open. There we have this conf.env and there we have this user and password environment variables, right? So I'm going to change this name to maybe db underscore user and db underscore password and for the db underscore user i'm already using admin and for the password let me go back to atlas let me copy this password from here all right i'm saving the database user and password in the config.in file so basically i'm using the environment variables for saving the database credentials all right, let's go back to Atlas and let's go ahead and let's create this user. So the user has been created. Now we need to provide the IP addresses which we want to whitelist. That means that only those computers with the whitelisted IP address will be able to access this database. Here, if I click on this add my current IP address, you can see that we have this error. This IP address has already been added. That's because if you see here in the IP address list, the IP address of my computer has already been added here. 
If you want to add another IP addresses to whitelist, you can add it here. And as I mentioned earlier, only the computers with the whitelisted IP address will be able to access this database. But it is also possible to whitelist all the IP addresses. In that way, all the computers in the world will be able to access your database. So currently, only this IP address has access to this cluster, to this database. So if you are using that computer with this IP address, then only you will be able to access this database. You will be able to access this cluster. But in between the development, if you switch your computers, then the second computer which you are using, that will not have access to this cluster. Because there, the IP address of that computer will be different. Okay, so what we want here is, we want to whitelist all the IP addresses so that any computer in the world can access this cluster. And since we are not dealing with any sensitive data here anyway, we can simply whitelist every single IP. And to do that, you can click on this network access page. It is going to open in a new window. There, you can click on this add IP address button. So here we have this pop-up. And here you can click on this allow access from anywhere. When you click on this button, it will whitelist all the IP addresses. That means any computer in the world can access the cluster, the database which you are creating on this Atlas. So let me click on this button and let's click on this confirm button. So as you can see, it says we are deploying your changes. So it has been done. Let's go back to Atlas here. And now let's go ahead and let's click on this finish and close button. And let's click on this go to databases. And here on this page, you can see the cluster which we created with this name cluster zero. Let's click on that. And here we are in our cluster. Now what I want is, I want to connect to this cluster from MongoDB Compass as well as MongoDB Shell. And to do that, you can click on this connect button. And here you can see different options for connecting to different clients. Here I want to connect to MongoDB Compass. So I can select this option. And here I can select I have MongoDB Compass because we installed it in our last lecture. And then here we can select the version of the Compass which we have installed on our machine. So I guess it is 1.12 or later. And here we have the connection string. So let's go ahead and let's copy this connection string. Let's go to MongoDB Compass. And there we want to create a new connection. For that you can go to this connect and click on this new connect option. And there we can specify the connection string. So let's go ahead and let's paste the connection string which we have just copied. And let's click on this connect button. And here you can see we have this error message authentication failed. That's because as I mentioned earlier, since we have created a user for our cluster, whenever we try to connect to the database using a client, there we need to provide the user ID and password. And here we have not provided the user ID and password. And that's why the authentication has failed. So where do we need to provide the user ID and password? For that, you can expand this advanced connection options. There, let's go to this authentication. So here you can see the username has been automatically selected. Let's provide the password. For that, let me go to VS Code from there. Let me copy this password. And let me paste it here. Okay. And let's click on this connect button now. And now we are connected to our cluster. So here you see in our cluster, we have databases. In there, we have two databases, admin and local. Let's go ahead and let's create a new database. So for that, we can go to this databases tab. There, we want to create a new database. Let's call this database maybe Cineflix. And inside that database, we also want to create a collection. Let's call that collection maybe movies. Okay, let me keep everything in lowercase here. So I will call it Cineflix. And let's click on this create database button. So you can see this Cineflix database has been created. Let's open that. And in there, we have this movies collection. Let's open that collection. In this collection, let's go ahead and let's add some documents. So for that, you can see this add data button. From here, you can select insert document. And what I'm going to do is, 
I am going to copy some movie objects from our movies.json file. So let's go to this data folder. In there, we have this movies.json file. Let me go ahead and let me copy one movie object from here. So maybe I will copy this movie object. Okay. And let's go back to MongoDB Compass. And there, let me go ahead and let me paste that document. And from there, let me also remove this ID field because this ID is going to be auto generated by MongoDB database. Let me click on this insert button. So now you can see one movie object has been inserted inside this movies collection. Let's go back to Atlas. And here on this page, we can go to this collections tab and there it is going to load all our collections. So here you can see we have this Cineflex database. In that we have this movies collection and in that movies collection we have this one document. All right, so this is all I wanted to cover in this lecture. Now, if you also want to connect to this remotely hosted MongoDB server from your MongoDB shell, then what you can do is you can again go to this overview tab. There you have this connect button. Click on that connect button. You have this connect with MongoDB shell option. So select that. From there, you can select this option. I have the MongoDB shell installed. If MongoDB shell is already installed on your machine, Otherwise, if it is not installed, you can select this option. Okay. And when you select this option, then from here, you can also select the version of the MongoDB shell, which has been installed on your machine. If you have installed MongoDB version 6.0, then you can select Mongosh. Otherwise, if you have installed MongoDB version 5.0 or less, in that case, you can select the version of Mongo shell, which is installed on your PC. And then from here, you can select the connection string and you can use this connection string to connect to the MongoDB database, which you have created on Atlas. So what you can do is you can open command prompt. Let's clear everything here. And here you can type mongosh command. So this mongosh is for MongoDB 6.0 and above. But if you're using MongoDB 5.0 or less, in that case, it should be simply mongo. Okay. And then let's specify the connection string. When you press enter, it will ask for the password. So here you need to provide the password which you have set for this admin user. So basically this password. Okay. And once you use that password, you should be able to connect to your remote MongoDB server using the MongoDB shell. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.